So I just gave a little demo on how to use cross sections to burn a channel into a train. And that's a pretty useful skill. So I thought I'd spin it out into a video here. And it's worth noting that this demo was created by my friend Cameron Ackerman. I'm basically just performing it. In the demo, we use the kind of famous Muncie train that already has a channel, but we're just kind of taking the bridges out. But this is the more common use case is that you've got a train that has just kind of beautiful, you know, overbank data, but you see people make models with these. There, there's no channel here. Um, you go here and you, know, you can use the measure tool to plot a cross section. This is a sign that you actually have no channel data um, and you should not build a model of this. You absolutely need channel data. And so if you have cross sections, you can burn those cross sections into your terrain. And this video will show you how. What do you immediately see about this? Well, you know, we've got these you know, bridges that are uh, not great and the channel is probably not resolved to the level at which we want to do our 2D modeling. Uh, but we do have a 1D model of this system. Uh, and if we look at the rivers in the cross sections, well, these cross sections are probably going to be a better model of what's happening in the channel than you know this DEM. Uh, and so if we kind of go look at the geometry data, you know, go to the cross sections, we have these cross section the cross sections have these points called channel banks. Uh, you know, th these are the transitions that modelers put in between what we consider our channel hydraulics and our overbank hydraulics. These are going to help us because what we're going to do is we're going to interpolate these cross sections, but only within these channel banks. All right. So if we go back to Mapper and we go to our river, you'll notice that uh, bank lines is not a thing. We don't have those, but we do have those bank points. And so we can automatically generate the bank lines from those bank points. So I'm going to right click on the, here. I'm going to edit it and I'm going to say, hey, create my bank lines from my bank stations. And it does. And one of the things you'll notice is that it's not really like a naive interpolation. Mark uses a Laplacian algorithm to look at curvature and actually you know, get you a better curved interpolation than you would otherwise expect from a simple, you know, 1D interpolation. But then the other thing is that you, you don't want to just trust these, right? Like these were picked off of a cross section, which may or may not be in exactly the right spot. And so, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn on my web in imagery. I'm going to ask for, the, you know, Google hybrid, you can choose the one you like. And then if I collapse this and go to my map layers, I can turn on that imagery. And now I can make some decisions about where I want to interpolate. Basically, I'm going to interpolate the cross sections between these lines. And so I can use both my terrain and my imagery to say, what is the channel? Now here you might think, well, you know, this is the channel and this is not, but actually, you know, this is all the side of the levee. And so I think I actually want to capture all of that. And so I'll go in here and I'll edit my bank lines and I'll just make sure that, you know, these bank lines capture, I'll just add a little bit more curvature here to make sure they capture the channel portion of this. Uh, and you know, this is just a demo, so I'm not going to actually model this. But the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that, you know, we're going to cut off this bridge at the right spot. We're essentially going to cut off the bridge on the inside of these. So you want to make sure that these are lined up so that that's appropriate, that you're going to get essentially a wall here from where there isn't a bridge to where there is. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an interpolation surface. Now, the idea here is that we have two different models of the land surface here. One is this DEM, uh, which is pretty good on the overbanks and then poor in the channel. And then the other are these cross sections, which are really good at like very specific locations, but then don't have a lot of information in between. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to turn these cross sections into a bigger DEM by interpolating between them. Okay, so what we'll do is uh, this can be a little hard to find because it's under cross sections. Think of it as an act you're doing with the cross sections and we'll right click and we'll say compute interpolation surface. 
Well, what that's going to do is it's going to create essentially a DEM by interpolating between the cross sections. And again, this is not as naive as you think it might be. Um, Mark's using this a little bit sophisticated Laplacian interpolation in order to capture you know, expansions and bends and things like that. OK, so now what we actually want, though, is the interpolation of the cross sections in the channel, but not externally. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the geometry again, and now we're going to export this layer and we're going to export it as a TIFF so we can turn it into our terrain, but we're going to ask for the channel only. We'll go into our terrain and we'll call it channel and we'll give it a cell size of five. All right. So now we want to add it to our terrain. Now you can't just add it to your train. You've created a train. Once you've created a train, it kind of is what it is. That's not true in REST 2025. In REST 2025, we can now just add it to our train. Um, but we're going to stop editing and we're going to come in here and we're going to create a new terrain. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get base and channel. And so this is the train we've made of our channels. Um, we want that to be on top because we want to choose this wherever it is and then use this wherever it isn't. And then to rename it, you actually choose this folder and you can come in here and give it a name and I'll just call this compound. All right, and then I am going to stitch and I'm going to create. Now, if I turn my geometry on, you'll see that actually that looks a lot like it used to. And that's because I do this all the time. I create my new terrain, but my old one's still on and the new one gets created below it. So you actually just have to turn off the terrain above. And you can see that what we've done is we've used the cross sections in order to interpolate a bathymetry. Um, you'll see, you want to go in, you don't want to just trust this. You can see, well, there are places maybe I wish I would have made different decisions about my channel banks. I can go in and I can do reps on this. The other thing you can do is you can actually look at the stitching decisions that were made. So if I come in here and I say uh, plot stitches, I can go in and I can look at essentially the, the tin that Raz made between the two DEMs. And that's how you use cross sections to burn a channel into your DEM. I'm Stanford Gibson, the Sediment Transport Specialist here on the RAS team, and these workshop reviews were funded by the HHNC SET program.